What's up everybody? This is the Katmandu Light Haul 38. 38 liter bag, comes in around $150 right now, which is a very affordable price for a travel bag. I've laid out all the things that I'm gonna put inside of this. It's got solid capacity. It's very lightweight. It has a very interesting organization, like interesting in a good way. You know, some people are like, oh, that's interesting. This organization is interesting in a good way to me because a lot of bags have the same kind of organization. This one definitely a little different and I like the way this organizes. Also, it has like, you can get one of these little guys and it clips onto the front. If you wanna do like the travel girl thing, clipping in, hey. Okay, let's jump right in with my first point here. The first point is just, you need to know that it's actually really lightweight, okay? 2.78 pounds, about 2.8 pounds. That's pretty lightweight for a travel bag, especially one with like an actually legit harness system. Then we have actual solid organization here, okay? I'm gonna show you the capacity. I'm gonna put in my packing cubes and my dop kit and stuff in a second. Let's talk about the organization first, okay? Everything on this bag is accessed through the, th for in terms of organization, there's the main, compartment here, which in transit, I never wanna open that thing up. I don't wanna, I'll show you it while it's empty. I don't wanna open this up at all. Little compression strap right here. It's kind of interesting actually. It goes over the zipper, so you have to undo it to, but you see how it pulls this side of the bag? This actually slides through here, so one strap can compress the whole thing. Kind of cute. Good work, Katmandu. Here's the inside of the bag just to give you a sense. We do have a pocket over here for, I think it's literally designed just for, you know. You can also put your passport in there, which is nice to have your passport somewhere that's zipped inside of something that's zipped inside something else. It's just a double layer of protection. But you'll see something here that I want you to notice. There's the, there's the main capacity. You see how it like, okay, it's just the main capacity. And then you see these like ball sacks that flop down, these little scrotoids right here. These are, two pockets that exist. They will cut into the, the capacity of the main compartment, but what's nice is you can use these things to segment where your gear goes. One of the things I'm always needing when I travel is access to things. Bluetooth headphones, water bottle, uh, the headphone splitter sometimes on the airplane, snacks, maybe a little bit of one-to-one -one THC CBD oil. So all of that happens through this zipper up top, okay? All of that happens right here. And then this is just one big mouth, one big gaping maw. So let me tell you what I've got for access on the go. This is the Porter pen case from Brown Buffalo. I love it. It's water resistant, it's super great. It's like, I just love, I love Brown Buffalo stuff. In here I have a bunch of snacks and some CBD oil, a little bit of one-to-one -one THC CBD. And then these are like uh, my Four Sigmatic instant coffee chaga elixir, which is really great for dealing with, like if you have long flights, travel stuff, there's like a, a, a golden latte turmeric mushroom mix. All these are adaptogenic. They help your body get used to, or bounce back or something like that. I like them because it's nice when you get to some place and you don't have a lot of money to spend or you don't know what's going on in town and it's not time for dinner, but you can just heat up some water and have like a golden latte and like have that little like mm, before bed killer. So my snack pouch is gonna go right in there. Another thing I got, a anchor USB-C little battery. See how little this is? It's just USB-C inside of here. I could show it to you, but it's just like, it's like every battery you've ever, it's just a cheap, Battery, I'll put a link to this in the description below. That is uh, for my iPad because I live working after this thing. It's like my notebook now and this does USB-C. So that goes in there. Gotta have my glasses and put them in a little travel case like that. I also gotta have my like all my tech gear. This is a pouch from Waterfield. It's just really thin and I can kind of, I just, I don't know, it's like organized inside so my cables are like this. If I needed to, I could put something else right here. What I've done in my past is I'd have actually put these headphones right in there like that. So let's just do that. Let's say these headphones like this, I'm not even gonna zip it up all the way. I just wanna be able to reach in and grab my headphones. But that's the other piece that I need, grab and go. That's all my grab and go stuff right there on the front of the bag in that nice, medium, like more than medium sized pocket. 
That pocket size is very interesting. It's just, you don't see that a lot. I think they made it, they're thinking people will probably pack it out with some clothes, I think even. But I love to put my stuff that I access on the go, external access stuff right up there. Now, that isn't the only thing going on there. This back zipper here be behind the handle, by the way, great handle, Kathmandu, this is like, this is just chill, minimal, nice. It doesn't it doesn't say too much, it doesn't say too little though. It like if there's enough to it. I love that. There's another one on this side, not another one on that side, okay? So just two handles, not one on the bottom, all right? Just two handles. Behind that top handle, you've got another little pocket here and it's designed for an iPad, okay? So, I'll take my 11-inch iPad Pro. Oh my god, do I love this thing? So sick. This plus the Notability app, I it's all I use. It's all my business papers, man. But it does have a silicone case with the smart keyboard because you got to have the smart key. I mean, it's like, of course you need the keyboard. But this fits in there. Okay, bueno. I even leave my Apple Pencil right on there because if it falls out, it's just at the bottom of that pocket. And inside of here, you also have another inner pocket, another place to put potentially the uh, passport but it's harder to get to the passport in the other one, so I don't know, it just depends. I, I would put my passports probably right here when I'm in transit, and then I'd put it in there when I got to my destination, and like that's, that's how I'm locking up my passport, because I'm like a bandito that way. I'm real risky. Okay, so you just, you have another thing in there, you also have a little key loop right here. Very interesting setup, like weird pocket, I think it's, Really functional, it's really useful. Thanks, Katmandu. Okay, one more piece on the organization is you gotta have, you wanna have a little spot for your water bottle. I do, I certainly do, because when I'm traveling, I don't know when the next time I'm gonna get to potable water is. So I like to have this one, my Camelback chute, because it's, I love it for so many reasons. Magnetic top, I like that it screws on, I can put it in my bag, I'm not worried about it spilling. I like that it's see-through so I can actually see how much water's in there. They do have a double insulated one as well, if you're interested in that sort of thing. I like to go plastic, I don't mind it. But the water bottle pocket's not that bad. It's got a little, my wife's, she has one of those clean canteens, the big ones, and it didn't look very, it wasn't very secure in there. I wish this was a little more secure. You can, you know, grip that little, it's nice that they have that little thing, but why not just make this just a really big, a bigger, let's just make it bigger. Let's just swallow up this water bottle. Okay, next up. Solid capacity, all right? We've seen inside the bag. Now let's look in it with all the stuff in the pocket, okay? Now, the truth is I've got more space in that pocket than I'm taking up, right? So when as I'm packing this bag, I can actually kind of push that stuff up a little bit, right? So two packing cubes is what I've been able to fit in this one. Here's the Peak Design, my favorite one. This bag would be perfect with this, one of these and one of the smaller versions of this, which is about half the size. I like this because it's super lightweight, very durable material. It's got like an actual like dirty clothes side that just slowly eats away. It, like it, it, it expands. It, it's great. It's a solid packing cube. When you need a packing cube, just go for a good one. I'll put a link to that in the description below. I put that in there, okay? See how this is exactly the size of that pocket? The truth is, if I close that right there, I'd be sitting pretty. I'd love that. I'd love to not put anything on top of here. But a lot of us need to travel with a little bit more. Oh wait, hold on a second. I'm gonna pull this out because I'm bringing a packable day bag with me, all right? This is a simple one from Why Not, made with just like basic materials. I love it, it's super just punk. I, I dig it. My preferred right now is probably when I'm traveling with my family, the Air Go backpack. I'll put a link to this one and the Air Go. Eh, ergo, and I'll put a link to my list of my favorite packable bags. There's a bunch more that you might like this one more than that one because there's two water bottle holders or whatever. So I'll put a link to that page in the description below right now. But when I'm bringing a packable backpack, I like to put that in first. And what's cool about this is I can just lift up that ball sack there. I can just like, hey, turn your head and cough. And then put this guy back there and now it's not taking up like any space in my bag. It's it's almost not, it's almost unnoticeable, but it's there when I need it. When I get to my destination, I pull that sucker out and I've got a tiny little, nice little day bag. I don't have to travel around with something big like this. I will be showing you this because some of you are definitely gonna love 
this in a little bit, which you'd use instead of a packable day bag. Okay, now check this out. Here's where things get a little bit complicated. If I could do just this, I'd be stoked right now. I got a packable day bag. I got everything I need. I got it all in a lightweight, very, and you're gonna hear in a second, like really, really comfortable to carry bag, totally sleek and slender, and I can get through the airplane aisle and anywhere I need to go. This bag is sick to carry. But let's just say like, I need a little bit more and let's put this, I can smush this on top. Here's another packing cube, one from Nomadic. Put that on there and let's say, okay, we're gonna fit in our adopt kit. I, I'm gonna be looking for a adopt kit that's more flat and smaller and maybe everything all together, but I need some compartments. This one's from Air. I love it because there's all these different organizer bits and I can keep my pills away from my, I don't know, all the stuff. And I can bring a lot of stuff and I live out of that. That's not my travel one. That's the one that I live out of and it's nice to not have to pack from a, from like the the thing the drawers in your bathroom into the dop kit and it's like I just leave it all in the dop kit that's I just leave it all in the dop kit all the time but look at this this thing's like uh, zipping up real easy okay we've got the compression strap so I'll I'll give that a little cinch because we're ready to go and it'll keep things nice and tight for me there but this is like this is two packing cubes and a dop kit and all my stuff that I need for my daily care for my like access as I go and I'm a packable backpack. So the capacity on this is actually really legit for such a tiny little little cute little frame, you know? 15 inch laptop pocket right here up against your back. Like I said, there's that like frame. Is that maybe it's not even metal, but for some reason, no, yeah, no, I don't know. I don't think it's metal, it's just rigid enough. Here's your 15 inch laptop pocket right here. Inside, you've got just one side's microfiber, right? Soft, and one side is padded. This is the thing that's up against your back with that polyester material. Little tag inside says 15 inches and, and my laptop fits in perfectly. I'd show you, but I'm recording the audio with it. Excellent carry comfort. Excellent carry comfort. Let's take a look at this really quick. You do have a subtle uh, lumbar sort of curvature here. I don't know if you can see, but you've got, this is like the Boundary Supply Errant. The Boundary Supply Errant has something like this where it's like ridges and then a mesh thing. You're gonna notice that for breathability. Also, you've got load bearing straps up here that help pull the bag forward on your frame. And these are surprisingly sort of cushy and nice, like they, they feel really solid with the mesh underneath them uh, or against your, your body. Let's put it on. By the way, hold on. I always forget about these hip straps because I just keep them put away because I find the bag's totally comfortable without them. But hip straps, hip straps. There's not just one, there's two. And they have to accommodate lots of body sizes, I'm sure, a really long strap. So once I clip in, I have to like tie this around. But for the most part, I just hide those away and I'm glad that I have the ability to do that. Speaking of hiding away, while we're back here, there is a way that you can actually just cover this whole thing up and say, good riddance, adieu, sir. I do not want you to be in my face no more. Where's this accent going? Adieu, not want you, sir, adieu. I do. I'm just zipping this up and filling up the space. Just to show you, you know, you can totally get that totally away for when you, if you need to check it in or maybe you wanna carry it on the plane like that, please don't carry it on the plane like that. You'll be able to easily get this in the overhead compartment with those straps. You don't need to do that. But I also wanna show you that because there is a strap mode for this, okay? You have on the top handle here, you've got a little do job in. And so we're gonna clip in there. And then on the back here, this is a little hideaway. Look at this guy. This is a little hideaway spot. And I can take this and do that. Now I can really comfortably and with style and ease, I'll just like carry my bag on my shoulder. I am a professional traveler. It's nice to have that handle on the side right here. You can see it's like not like it's not like a killer looking bag like that. I wouldn't want to do this. I think it looks killer as a backpack. 
But I know some of people would use this as like a gear hauler and have a different backpack on. And so they'd want to carry it that way. It's nice that you're able to. You don't have to though. Pulling this guy back to, to where we were is pretty easy. You just slide it into this cover right here, which is, okay, bueno. I have to say that I like this. Dear Kamandu, gracias por su trabajar. Porque, thank you. Excellent carry comfort. <laughs> it really is quite nice. The padding in the straps you're gonna notice. So I notice a lot because I, I use backpack straps all the time and lots of different kinds of them, right? Most of them are thinner. This is a nice, it's just sort of supple enough and it feels like it might keep its suppleness over time. We're gonna talk about that in just a second on this bag. But you feel this nice frame in the back. It has a nice like metal frame that goes around and very minimal around the outside. So it keeps it, keeps it really stiff back there. You've got the load bearing straps to pull the bag forward on you. And then I've got my hippie strap is to help me get the weight up and on my hips. That plus the sternum strap means I can get a lot of the weight off of my hips. And now, I mean, we're talking like long haul. Like I can go a long time with this. It's nice when you get a travel bag that is able to clip in and like grip it and rip it. So you just, you get, it might take a little work to get the hip and to get all the things set up. But then once you're there, you have the sort of the most longevity you can have carrying that bag. Oftentimes I don't use this. I do do the sternum strap often and all that weight's coming down here. No biggie because it does a good job of distributing it across my body. However, hip straps, they can really, once you get it set up nicely, and if you can get the bag to pull forward a bit more, cause some bags with hip straps, they still are back like this. And now you just got this like lower lumbar thing which is not comfortable. But when I'm locked in on this bag, I'm very sleek in transit. You can't even see it behind my body. I, I'm bigger than the bag is just by just a little bit, right? So I know where I am in space. It's called proprioception. Moving down the center of the aisle in the airplane, like you'd be surprised how crappy that is to do with a big bag that like catches on stuff. I'm oftentimes with my, like with my Tortuga set out, I'm pulling, cause it's, the set out was made. I'll put a link to the set out below. Actually, I'll put a link to all my favorite travel bags below. I have a list of my favorite travel bags. They're in order of how I would show them to someone, one of my friends particularly. And I would want them just to choose whichever, the first bag that they're like, all right, that'll be fine. The first bag like that, just go with it, okay? The set out, Tortuga set out is gonna be up towards the top of that list because it's the one that a lot of people want right now because you need to carry, they wanna carry the most possible and they're only going someplace within the US or someplace kind of easy to get to or I just have to bring a lot of shit where I'm going. This is a little more streamlined and yet I still have a lot of shit in there, right? But the set out, you can definitely get more. What you're gonna get with the set out is sometimes people will pull them off when they're walking down the aisle. I've done that before because it's just easier. Because sometimes you'll get, you're like bumping into people or something. This is really sleek in travel. It's like a little jetpack. And while we're here, look at this. You see this bag? This is a little cute little, this is their little like, it's a part of this thing. I think it comes as a separate uh, accessory. Got little straps that can fold off and go away, which I, you, you might wanna do when you're putting it into this mode, which is, come on, let's clip on. Look at this cute little guy. Where's you, don't you hide? Don't hide, honey. Now you are a really neat person going on a real serious trip for a certain amount of time. And you're looking for somebody to maybe partner up with. Like, hey, what's your name? I'm sort of bored in life. Well, what about you? You can tell I think about things because I don't have one bag, I have two. But it's nice, it clips in. It's If this was my laptop and all the things that I needed in the plane, right? You gotta deal with looking like a fucking, like, like an extra in like a movie about the Ninja Turtles or something. I don't know why it makes me think of that, but it's like like under the costume that you'd wear as an, as an extra Ninja Turtle, like is just this, right? And then you put, and anyways, I could, that's not important. The important thing is if I had my laptop over here, laptop, snacks, Bluetooth headphones, all that shit right here, then when I get to my plane seat, actually a little bit before, cause I don't wanna be late on that. You know the thing in planes where you're like, 
you made somebody wait behind you and it just feels like you're like killing their child or something. It's like, I am so sorry. I am gonna just let me get out of your way. Sorry. And then this goes in the airplane seat and this goes in the overhead compartment. All right. That is a, a nice little setup. And this bag is cool. This bag is like surprising. It's, I'm not, I'm not in love with the colors. I think they have it in all black. This whole like, uh, it's like old wine color. But you've got a, this is smart, a little, inter, little pocket up here with the, with the nice little kind of very subtle microfiber. So you'd put your glasses right in there maybe, or use it to organize some other stuff. You got a 15 inch laptop guy here. You've got a little mesh guy there and a little bit of capacity. No water bottle pocket on the outside. So for my family, this whole thing would be full of water bottles. <laughs> We're so stupid. <laughs> We should probably just have one water bottle. Let me show you that laptop compartment. By the way, no pack, no, no freaking handle right here. It's always like this. I'm always doing this. I always come over my right. I come over my right. A lot of people do that. But this bag, if you come over your left, you're gonna find wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You got a handle right there. Now a note on the materials. This thing is made, uh, some of the colors, most of the colors are made with a recycled polyester. It's like, they, what do they say? It's 29 recycled plastic bottles are in here. Okay, that's nice. It's nice to get the plastic out of the fucking ocean and into bags and on our back, allowing us to go travel which is, you know, talk about an environmental impact flying, but you're just being in that space, right? Your money's going in that space. So you go from the water bottle in the ocean to you buying an empanada in Peru, and you see this like cycle of bliss. It's made out of decent materials, okay? I think this thing might break down a little earlier than other bags. I think that's where you see the whole, the reason why it's $150 instead of $250, which is a bummer to me, and so, like, hold on. I don't know that this is gonna this is gonna fall. I don't think it's gonna fall apart. I just think it's gonna show some wear and tear up around these edges. I think you're gonna you're gonna see the you're gonna see the wear and tear. You're gonna see the road on this thing fairly easy because of the what it's made out of. Now that's a little bit sad to me because I think the design of this is epic. It's also, it's really lightweight. That's one of the reasons why they went for these materials. Like you can keep this nice for a long time, but I find in travel, I'm like hucking and throwing and shucking and jiving. I don't care about my gear very much. I'm like, I'm like I, I want this to take that. And I like bags that are made with big 1680D ballistic nylon and stuff like that. A lot of those on the travel bags page at Matterful are that kind of stuff. But I would love to see this, it would get heavier but I would love to see this in a, a material that, that would last for a really long time because this pocket configuration is really interesting. It's just really unique. And so to be able to fit all of this and all the shit in my main compartment, I just don't, I don't need any of that stuff. Everything I need access to is up here in its own little compartment. If I drop a little thing in, it only goes so far, right? Because the sack, of the of the pocket is is it only goes so far down. So I'm, I'm never losing it completely down in the bottom of the bag in the corners. But decent materials. I think you're going to notice that as well on the the straps. I think these these are going to this mesh is going to show some wear and tear. It's very thin, and uh, uh, it's good. It's solid. Kathmandu makes real outdoors gear. So I could be totally wrong. I like this mesh. This feels solid, but. Uh, my hunch is that you're gonna see wear and tear on this bag sooner than, than a lot of the others that I review. And uh, that's partly why it's so affordable and it's also partly why it's so lightweight, right? But I love that even at such affordable lightweight product, they put tons of work into designing this thing. It's been utterly thought through. So all in all, a very capable travel bag, lightweight, got solid capacity, really interesting pocket configuration and organization and excellent carry comfort, like really solid carry comfort. This is a bag I would put a lot, a lot of women in. Like when, when women go like, hey, what bag should I get for a woman? If they're not already going like Tortuga set out, which has great harness system, and some of the others where people kind of have like strong feelings for peak travel bag, then I'm like, well, you should look at this. You should look, you should basically look at my fucking matterful travel bag page and because uh, they're in order of how I would share them with you. 
And this for the ladies is a is a solid option. I think it's a really solid option. Just because uh, it's a little it's a little bit smaller, it'll fit better on smaller frames. Not all frames, not all women's frames are smaller. I know that, but but for a lot a lot of like a lot of littler frames, this would work great on. I love this bag. I think it's really really cool. I think it's well designed, thoughtfully conceived, and ultimately something that if you traveled with this compared to like your old fucking roller luggage, right? You're you're gonna have a much better time. If you travel with this compared to even like a really big travel bag, you might even have a better time because it's gonna force you to pack a little bit lighter. And that's a big deal because when you get to your destination and you don't have something you think you need and you don't have it and you s just start to learn you don't actually need it. And then your life starts to focus more on what are the things that I love to have. Like I love to have snacks. I just love to have snacks. Because when you need it, having it there changes everything. If you don't have that, it changes everything. Stuck on the tarmac, sitting there. Oh God, it's the worst. But when you got snacks, you got everything you need. So traveling a little bit lighter and finding out what you really need is a, it's a kind of a game that you're playing with yourself, but it's a dialogue, it's a conversation. You don't know what you need. You're looking forward to learning what you're like in travel. That's what travel affords us. That's why we trip. And I think this is gonna be a bag that, that a lot of you are, are going, to, like if you went with, you'd really love for a while. It'd be a great companion. And only 150 bucks, that's really affordable. They're able to do that because they're making so many more products. They're, they're distributing all across the world. When they make something, they have to make a bunch of it, right? So they're trying to bring down the cost uh, because they'll sell a lot more of this at $150 than they would at 225 or 250. Right, but I would I would say, dude, if this was three hundred and twenty dollars, um, as long as the material was more robust and we knew it, I'd be like, this is worth it. It's so unique. It's such a fresh way of going at travel. So I don't know. I'm kind of gushing on this guy. Love that it has this little thing too. I just I think you'd just look like made for Costa Rica if <laughs> you had both of these. You're like, hey, I'm going to a yoga and digital detox retreat. Oh, really? I kind of guessed that about you already. That's not a bad thing. Go to a yoga and digital detox <laughs> fucking retreat. Throw in some breath work and meditation. Experience how weird it is that you just have a body because the number one upgrade to your life as a traveler and as a non-traveler is going to be your health, your wellness, and your level of comfort and, and, and like enjoyment that you have in your own body. Um, that is such a gift. You have this meat suit, this space suit, and it can do a lot of the things you want it to do. And if it can't do some of the things you want to do, I bet we can work towards getting it there. Even just in the direction. This is where someone who's been in a wheelchair their whole life looks at you for like not trying riding or something. And they've had to like work their ass off to learn to move their arms again. And they're, just, they're like, why are you, so do you want to write or not? I can't, I don't understand. If you want to do it, figure it out. I know life is complicated out there, you guys. I know that uh, some of you are going to be using this trip for like totally different means than a lot of others of you. Like, who knows what your life has got coming towards you? But I certainly know the feeling of like I'm I like of being trapped, of being sort of scripted into my life where I feel like I, I'm like I have to keep doing these things, and it made my life at first it made it really depressing, um, and I would feel really like disempowered, and then other times I would just feel pure boredom. I bet a lot of people out there are really 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 bored in life. I think we're really bored. I've been really, really bored. I've been bored for years of my life and I can work really hard in my boredom. Like I can be bored and in life, but I can be like working pretty hard and like kind of giving like, 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 okay, we can't just fall off the wagon completely. Like we got to like keep this thing going and really focus. I do creative work, which is totally dependent on your mental state. Like it totally is like, if you're feeling good, you can do better work. What I found is that I'm feeling good, I do better work and the results are better. That'll blow your fucking dick off. I mean, you, you just like, you work twice as hard feeling bad and bored and get like a quarter of the results. So 
there's this, there's, there's a whole thing going on where we're learning like, what is a human being? What is a mind? What are these emotional states? Can we shift and change them over time? Can, do we have, uh, do we have autonomy? Do we have a level of design and control of our own experience mentally, internally? And that's where for me, at some point, traveling out into the world, going on those kinds of trips, got interesting only in as much as it was helping me do the inner searching, the inner trips, right? And, uh, and luckily you don't need anything for that. You just need like to close the door and start breathing, watching your breath and meditating. <laughs> It'll get you there. <laughs> Highly recommend. I'll put a link to insights timer app, which I like. It's a guided meditation app and there's a bunch of guided med meditations to choose from. And there's one guy that I just like, like 10 minute, 15 minute body scans, Bodhi Paksa or something like that. Just great stuff. If you want to get started with meditation now, Let's get back. I'm sorry. That just happens every video. I get a little rant in at the end. You, thanks for, I know you have a lot of options when you fly the friendly skies of YouTube. I saw recently that, like, you remember how when you were a kid, like you'd hear other kids say, I want to be an astronaut. Like that, like, you know, I want to be a firefighter. I want to be an astronaut. In China right now, I just saw some stat that was like, there's a lot of people that are, that, like kids that are like, I want to be an astronaut. And they're like, oh, that is a, an, that is a superior choice. And a lot of people in the US, it's a little bit flipped. Like almost nobody wants to be an astronaut. A lot of kids are saying, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a vlogger. Dude, think about that. Like I'm one of the guys like just on the, on the coattails of the pioneers of like what we're doing on YouTube. But I'm realizing I can just get products, tell the truth about them, try to solve problems that are interesting to people uh, and be myself. That's I think the biggest commodity in the world is learning how to be yourself, yourself, to, to be you, to be honest with your experience of the world. And we're afraid to do it because we're afraid of being dumb or we're afraid of being ostracized or we're afraid of, you know, getting in trouble, being wrong, bad or broken. There's a lot of reasons why we don't feel comfortable being ourselves because we were probably brought up in an environment where it wasn't necessarily safe to do it. But that's why I like the inner trips so much because we can work through that. We can come to terms with it. We can, yeah, that's your, that's your fucking childhood. That's your karmic situation, man. Everybody's got their own. And one of the biggest pills we can swallow is just our own life, our own existence, that this is what we are right now, up to now. Acceptance, so big. And I find that it came almost exclusively through, well, a lot of, Teach, I listen to Ram Dass's Experiments in Truth is super good. That's why I wear the hat. It's because I honor Ram Dass as like a shaman or as one of my teachers. Like, because that one book, Experiments in Truth, I just listened to it at an important part in my, like time in my life where I was going through a lot of heavy shit. And it just was useful for me. I don't subscribe to all of the, the Hindu doctrines, but he was unashamedly useful for me. I know some of you are watching this going like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Like, you're, and you're like, half of you are probably just watching it going like, I don't know why I haven't turned this off yet. That's what we do here. We get into an interesting product because products help us do something meaningful in our life. Some products are shit. Some are good. If you spend time with shit products in your life, that means the thing you're doing in your life feels like shit. Disappointing everyday products are disappointing every day. But when we find good products that are interesting at helping us do something real in our life, then it's like, holy shit, man, that product enabled that as a, like a helpful, like a helpful character in a story. What the, like, it's like, it's like Frodo's buddy. <laughs> it's like Steve Harrington in fucking <laughs> Stranger Things. How do I feel so much for Steve at this point? Do you remember when Steve first came on in the early days and it was like the early episodes and you're just like, what a fucking douchebag, right? And now <laughs> if you're following Stranger Things, he's just a great character. By the end of all, you go through stuff with this character and you realize they, they had something. They had something. That's the way I feel about products. I think they support us. And the, re the person, the thing that's supporting you in this is actually the designer. It's actually the designer who put it together, who thought about it, who grokked this into the material world 
for you and for me to do our thing in life. Love that, oh my goodness. And it's cool that this is made out of recycled bottles. I've been hard on the material, but I think that recycled bottle story is an interesting and a good one. I don't know how much it actually is, is like saving energy because of how much energy it probably takes to convert it into a material. But at the same time, we have all of these mountains and mountains of garbage in the sea, plastics specifically. So to be able to start cultivating that for something that we like, like now it's like, oh God, we <laughs> plastic's really useful. Buckminster Fuller says, and I will leave you with this. Buckminster Fuller says that uh, that w pollution or um, or uh, what do we call it when when there's the stuff that we're making over here and then there's like the 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 awful there's the the leftovers and all of this kind of stuff stuff that gets drained out into the ocean stuff that goes and is unused somewhere is actually resources that we just haven't used we haven't learned to harvest yet we don't I haven't understand how valuable they are yet. Right? Like we don't grok the significance of what's going on here. That's what the plastic bottle has been. And now we're finding ways of threading it into fucking yarns or something like that. It's very interesting to get that stuff and now it's a resource. This is a model for sustainability, potentially, but we still have to design the entire system because we are running out of water. <laughs> Don't look into that question. I've been Chase Woman Reeves. Subscribe if you're interested in this kind of stuff, these kinds of conversations, these kinds of products, and this kind of stuff we do in our life. And in not being co like complacent and bored at all times with our life, not feeling powerless. If you're interested in that, follow along. Let's go uh, for a little ride. Also, check me out on Instagram because let's take our relationship to the next level. You know, I'm ready. Are you? Love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.